whole classroom of all people. Wave, everybody. Wow. What's up, guys? Okay, so you got the floor. These are students in our new agent orientation program for the Long Island Board of Realtors. And they are anxious to meet you as you're anxious to meet them and give them your best advice about Real Estate 101. I have you up on a uh, screen, as you can see. All right, cool. So so uh, you guys are not real estate agents yet? Uh, they are. They okay. are. Okay, okay. Okay, well, <laughs> let me just kind of go through my little spiel real quick, and then I want to take some some answer, uh, some questions, okay? So, basically, I started out in real estate in 2002. I was 20 years old. Um, there was no Facebook, Zillow, any of that stuff. Um, you know, I was roofing houses before that with my father, so it took me eight months to make my first sale, okay? So in today's world, you can make sales pretty much immediately if, you, if you're if you quick enough to, to put two and two together and put the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, real estate's a lot more simple than what you're thinking. You're going to get a lot of stuff thrown at you from all kinds of different angles. People telling you that they this is how you should do it, that's how you should do it, this is how you should get leads. And I'm telling you, it is so simple. Um, don't let all the... Uh, all the distractions and the shiny pennies and all that stuff uh, bog you down, okay? You, you want to keep it really simple. So when I made my first sale, things went really good. By the t I started when I was 20. By the time I'm 23, I'm a millionaire. The market blew up. And, the, and by the time I'm 25, I'm broke. I'm bankrupt. I'm sleeping on friends' couches. I'm sleeping in my car. I went back to roofing houses and I was working on an oil rig for a little while. So it was during that time when I lost everything and I had nothing that I actually learned the most. It gave me a great opportunity to learn learn who I was and give me an opportunity to, to learn how to move forward. But I read a hundred books, I studied the market, and I wanted to know why I failed. And what I came up with at the end of the day, um, long story short, was that I realized that the first half of my career the first half of my career was all about the dollar, about the closing, about the transaction. All I cared about was the money, um, and I realized that that was my problem. And when I flipped it from the money and the transactions to the people and the relationships, that's when I started winning. Um, so it, for some reason it just clicked that it, it's about people, right? Like when the market crashes, people don't go away. You know, the number of transactions go down, but but people don't go away. And closings continue to happen every single day. So as a new agent, I want my, my entire goal in the real estate industry now is to become the number one coach, the number one speaker. I'm the first completely free uh, real estate coach, and my goal is to reduce the failure rate. This is what I want to do and how I'm gonna do it. I wanna get to the new agents as quick as I can to, to explain to them that when, when coaches and trainers try to come to you and say that you know you should be you know going after motivated sellers and that uh, you know you should ask them if they want to buy or sell and who do they know the one to buy or sell and all that stuff that's why most agents have to quit when they get on the business because that language is just set up to figure out what the client can do for the agent okay and and the and the prospects don't like that and you don't know what you did wrong you know they they run away and you don't know why you haven't sold anything and now you have to quit if if i can get to every, all the new agents as quick as i can and explain to them that it's about what in the world can i do for you and it doesn't matter if they want to buy or sell today or not um, the, the, the goal is, is to create as many relationships as you can, not how many closings you can have. If you create the relationships and you do it on a massive level and you put the work in, you're going to have plenty of closings. Trust me. I've sold 100 properties a year since 2014 as a single agent. Um, I'm going to do it this year, 2020, 2021, 22. Um, I've got it down. I understand. Like I had to lose everything to figure all this out. So. I want to get to agents and, and let them know it's not about, you know, do they want to buy or sell right now or not? Because a lot of people tell you if they don't, I'm not ready to buy or sell, move on. But for me, all the money in real estate and all the success in real estate are within those relationships with people that you create that aren't ready to do anything today because they will later down the road. 
Every relationship that you can create with a property owner or a possible buyer is worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career through repeat business referrals and referrals of referrals. So when I realized all this when the market crashed, um, I got to work. I got back in real estate, actually got laid off from the oil rig, got back in real estate and just started working my way up. And, and every single deal from there on was about the people. I didn't care about the, the, the transaction at all. Um, I just wanted to help them do what they wanted to do. When people want to buy or sell, they're doing it for a reason bigger than they just want to buy or sell something. They're doing it because their mom died, their kids went to college, you know, they got a new job, they got laid off, you know, they're relocating for this or that. Something's going on in their life. It's not that they just want to buy or sell a piece of property. You got to find out why people want to do what they're trying to do and then focus on that. So, you know, as I got back in, um, I then started realizing other things, okay? Like when the market crashes, closings continue to happen every single day and business is unlimited. There's zero competition. I send out my coaching emails to every single agent in my MLS and my direct market, teaching them everything I do. And I sell more than anybody in my county. And I'm teaching them every little step of my business, all the intricate details. And I haven't lost a single client in two years of doing that because I've been all in from day one that business is unlimited and competition doesn't exist. If I lose a client, I'm gonna turn around and go get five more clients. You can't do it all. So don't be worried about competition. Don't be worried about losing deals. Losing deals are the greatest thing that could ever happen to you. You get future time back that you don't have to spend on that deal anymore and you learn something. You became a better agent right then. You can take that new future time and this new knowledge and go get five more deals. Um, if you think about losing deals in that perspective because you're going to lose deals, there's going to be sellers that you have an interview with that don't choose you to do the, to, to list the property. You're going to have buyers that go under contract and, and have to back out at the last minute because of financing or an inspection or something like that. You're going to lose deals. There's no way around that. So why not recognize that's, that it's inevitable and use it as a way to multiply your business, right? So there, there's all these little things that I want to push into the market. Like when the market crashes, closings happen every day. I'm literally going to reduce the failure rate in the industry by A, getting to the new agents before all these other people do to show them the right way to build your business, and B, to spread my message about when the market crashes so less agents have to get out of the business when the market does decide to crash. It's going to crash at some point. But buyers that buy when the market's down, they want to buy right now before the market goes up. Okay, and the people that want to sell, they have to sell because they're in trouble. The market crashed. So there's so much urgency in the market. You guys can be very rest assured that you have job security. Like there's, there's enough business for everybody forever, as much as you can handle. Like if you want to make a million dollars a year, two million dollars a year, it's there for you, for all of you, each and every one of you. You just got to put in the work and go get it. The biggest thing is building your database full of property owners in the area who love you, that you've actually talked to voice to voice. Everybody's into the social media and online stuff, but I'm telling you, the reason why technology hasn't replaced real estate agents is because the voice to voice. There has to be that voice to voice contact, that interaction, that uh, consultation through the market. Um, you know, uh, local markets are so different. Like I can't turn around and sell something up there where you guys are, even though I'm a master here, I can't sell anything where you are because the market's so different. And so because of that, um, people need real estate agents. On top of needing them to consult them through the market, they also need them to take care of the deal for them. You know, all the intricate parts of the deal. This is, this is some people's biggest, you know, decisions and financial moves of their life. And so they need somebody, they need a professional that does this every day. Real estate agents are not going away. Closings are going to continue to happen every day forever. Um, and you have to put relationships over transactions every single time. Um, you know, like I, I, you know, I cut my commission a lot here and there. I, I, uh, I take care of inspection items that come up in the inspection. Um, you know, like I do all kinds of little things that a lot of agents say not to do because I understand that that relationship is worth way more to me than any one commission or any couple hundred dollars or even a thousand or two dollars. I mean, I would even trade like two or three commissions for a relationship with somebody that I know is going to be worth 10 to 20 deals to me over the life of my career. Um, so, 
there's a, there's a lot of things. So I, I think market share is not how many listings you have, how many transactions you're doing. Market share, listen to me, is what agent has the most lifelong relationships with property owners in the area, in the market, okay? The agent that has the most real voice-to-voice -voice, lifelong relationships with property owners that they're staying in touch with, whoever has the most of those owns all the market share. You have all the future business. Your job doesn't need to be how many closings, it needs to be on a day-to-day -day basis. How many new relationships did I create? How many great conversations did I have? So it brings me to my next point, which is what's the number one skill for a real estate agent? It's literally how to communicate who you are as a person that you care about people with how you're, with, with, with you know, line that up with how you're communicating with your prospects and making them feel comfortable. Um, I call it the FE effect. Uh, you know, giving them that friend or family effect, um, like they're your mom, your brother, your cousin. Um, like really talking and getting that same mindset that you have when you talk to your parents or your brother or siblings. That same mindset needs to be exactly how you're going into these conversations with your prospects. Because, you know, like if you if you watch me make live calls on YouTube, there's tons of uh, videos of me making live calls, people that I've never talked to before, um, you know, hundreds of calls. You'll, if you see my tone, it sounds like I've known them forever because that's how I'm going into the conversation and it makes them feel comfortable. If I'm nervous, then they're going to be nervous. If I'm just trying to do a deal, you know, and I, if I just sound like every other agent and say, hey, have you considered selling your property? They're probably not going to be interested in talking to me anymore because I sound like every other agent, A, and B, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm trying to see if they can help me and they notice that. It's like when you when you don't know an owner and you call them and you say, you know, would you consider selling? You know, that's basically saying, hey, I don't know you, but you know, can you sell your property so that I can make a commission? Can you help me make some money? And if I and if you don't, if you if you if you're not interested, do you know anybody else that can help me? So the whole conversation is based around them helping you. What I'm doing is, is I'm flipping that to teaching agents how to communicate that they care about their prospects and trying to figure out what the agent can do for the client regardless if they want to buy or sell. And within that is how I'm selling 100 properties a year. Also, my follow-up is a weekly email. Every single Wednesday since 2007, I've sent a weekly email out to my entire database. Um, and that is the glue that holds everything together. I have people that I talked to or show property to 10 years ago that didn't buy anything, that bought something last year and referred four people to me, right? And if you don't capture those people and have a system in place to stay in touch with them forever, then you're not gonna get those 10 to 20 deals out of them over the life of your career. So you have to A, be really good at communicating who you are and that you care about them, you don't care if they buy or sell, you just wanna help them. And then B, have a really good follow-up system in place that hits them up every, very consistently. You know, mine's every Wednesday. You know, doing it every Wednesday, people are like, well, don't people opt out and unsubscribe? No, they don't. Some of them do, and they're gonna, they're gonna do that even if you do once a month, those people, right? But the fact is, every week shows that you're the hardest working person in the area. They wanna see consistent, hard work, professionalism, dependability, that email, shows my clients how dependable I am. Um, so, you know, and it's original content. I create it every week. It's not a drip campaign. It's not an automated deal. I sit down for 30 minutes every week and create it. What does this do for me? It allows me to scale my business. I can, I, I can spend the same 30 minutes regardless if I have 5,000 people on that email or 5 million people. It still only takes me 30 minutes to create that content and send it out every week. So I spend that 30 minutes uh, you know, that's my baby. That's what that's that is a representation of me. I do it. Um, so, you know, like that is how you that is how I've scaled my business to where, you know, I, I don't have to worry about following up as much. I don't have to worry about past clients as much. I can't call out my past clients. I have too many. So this is a way where I capture, I still capture most of those people and am I going to win them all? No. You also have to be okay with not winning every single situation. You're not going to win them all. And a lot of people are crippled by this. They, they try everything they can to win every single situation. And what it does is it, you put so much time into one thing trying to, trying to capitalize on that and it's taking so much time away from all these other people that you need to be helping. When you need to be kind of okay 
with losing things here and there for the sake of efficiency and time management and growth. So I think replacing everything as far as do you want to buy or sell, who do you know, all that garbage with is there anything in the world I can do for you today? And base everything around that, base the entire relationship moving forward around that, get their email address and send weekly emails every single week on the same day of the week forever and just put 15 hours a day in for 15 years. That's what I did. Like if you really want it, that's what you have to do. Um, nothing's gonna be easy, nothing's gonna come quick. And I'll tell you too, I circle prospect, which is calling all the owners in a subdivision and seeing, you know, at, saying, hey, I don't wanna take up too much of your time, a house around the corner sold, then if there's anything I could do for you. No, okay, well look, I'm sure, uh, is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? Cool, I'm sure at some point you're gonna wanna do something. Would it be all right if I stayed in touch? Okay, cool, what's your email? And a lot of people say, well, you know, how do you get now business? That's all futuristic stuff. Give me something that is now business because when a Zillow lead comes to you, um, you call them, you show them property, and they say, you know, yeah, we're kind of looking, we're kind, we're, we're looking at maybe six months out, right? Or for sale by owner, you go, you go talk to them, and they say, we're not right, you know, we're not ready to list right now. We're going to try to sell it on our own for a little while, okay? Or even expire. We're going to wait, you know. All of those can be long-term deals and all of them could potentially be short-term now business as well. Everything has a possibility of being something now and everything has a possibility of being something later. There's not a source of leads. It's like this stuff happens quicker. And so circle prospecting for me is, is there's no agents calling them. Everybody's calling expires or for sale by owners, but this is something that nobody else is doing and the owners are receptive to you and they, they're open to begin this relationship. And it's unlimited. You cannot call every single property owner in your area, in your market, ever in your life. And so it creates a situation where you have unlimited business to, to tend to. Um, closings are happening every day regardless of what the market does. It's just your job to get out there and start creating these relationships.